Did you ever wonder what would happen if the strongest marines became pirates? How would their pirate crews look and how strong would they be? Is there anyone among them who could become the next king of the pirates? For example, Kizaru. The scariest of the three current admirals would be just as, if not even scarier, as a pirate. Imagine if he didn't have to listen to the celestial dragons and the higher ups and could do whatever he wanted. First of all, I think it's safe to assume that he would still eat the Pika Pika no Mi at some point, as that had nothing to do with him being a marine. Of course, before venturing out to the sea, Kizaru would need to assemble a crew, because without them, there would be no one to remind him how Denden Mushi worked, and on top of that, I honestly doubt he could navigate the seas by himself. Now, just to be clear, in this video we'll not be exploring what would happen if these marines became pirates today, but rather what would happen if they chose to become pirates in the first place when they were still young. Anyway, while sailing, Kizaru would usually act relaxed and like he doesn't care much about anything around him. However, that would quickly change if someone anchors him enough. This happened once in the show after he failed to eliminate the Straw Hat pirates and went on a rampage capturing every pirate on the island during Salbity Arc. Knowing how cocky the majority of the pirates are, sooner or later one of them will do something that'll seriously annoy Kizaru, and at that point, every pirate in his vicinity is doomed. With his Pika Pika no Mi, Kizaru would quickly go from ship to ship and destroy even the large fleets all by himself. This unprecedented strength would quickly make Kizaru famous throughout the Grand Line, and everyone would know not to mess with him. It sounds a bit weird, but I think that he would be really similar to Mihawk, a strong guy who just minds his own business on his own territory and doesn't really involve himself with politics or stuff like that. And while we're talking about Kizaru's similarities to Mihawk, it's also likely he would become a warlord. However, he wouldn't do this so he could commit crimes without having to worry about marines, but more because he doesn't want to be bothered while traveling. At the end of the day, I just don't see Kizaru having any ambitious goals or going out of his way to search for the One Piece, so he'd probably just retire from piracy after becoming an old man and live out his remaining years in peace, similar to Rayleigh. This was only the first out of seven characters we're covering in this video, and some of them will be much stronger than Kizaru. Anyway, I think we can all agree, Kizaru just wouldn't fit as the next Pirate King. And there's someone else who's way more fitting for the role. Someone much freer. Of course, I'm talking about Monkey D. Garp. Being Luffy's grandpa, Garp shares the same easygoing attitude as him. Also, in one of the prototypes for the first chapter of One Piece, instead of Shanks, Garp is the famous pirate who inspires Luffy to go on his adventure. This means that even Oda, the creator of One Piece, thought Garp could make an excellent pirate. So what would this guy do if he switched jobs? Well, first of all, we can all agree that his pirate crew would look really similar to Luffy. He would most likely only have a handful of crewmates who would all consider each other friends and would even die for one another. Now since Bogart is Garp's right hand man in the show, it's only natural that he would be the vice captain of Garp's crew and the man he'd trust the most. Garp would gladly help anyone in need on his journeys and would prioritize the most fun path instead of the most optimal, boring one. However, one way he would differ from Luffy is that Garp really enjoys training wimps and turning them into capable fighters, as he did with Kobe and Helmapo in the show. Based on this, we can assume that Garp would have a couple of youngsters on his crew at all times, similar to how Roger had Shanks and Buggy in his crew. He would constantly overtrain these poor youngsters, making them repeatedly punch the subscribe button with their bare hands, which you should also try by the way, and leaving them in dangerous areas to survive but they would love and respect him regardless. Of course, his rivalry with Roger would still stand, and I can imagine the two fighting to death one day, then partying and drinking the next. Let's be honest, Garp always really respected Roger, but just couldn't be friendly with him because he was a pirate, so now that they're both pirates, they can finally be buddies. Same as Roger, Garp would also want to find the legendary treasure, One Piece, but knowing his carefree attitude, he would often get distracted by random adventures and spend too much time having fun on various islands. So even in this timeline, I still believe Roger would be the one to eventually find the treasure, and he would probably tell Garp all about it, same as he did to Whitebeard in the original story. From this point on, Garp and his crew would sail the seas for many, many years, and the great pirate Garp would eventually die a piece of old age, surrounded by friends and companions. Okay, although Garp didn't become the king of the pirates, he at least had a fun journey with his friends, but we can't say the same for the next character on the list whose journey ended much more tragically. You see, Green Bull is one of the new admirals introduced after the time skip, and although we know very little about him, we know he really likes to idolize people and act like them. We've seen this in the show with his admiration towards the fleet admiral Sakazuki, with Green Bull even adopting a really similar justice motto as him. So if he was to become a pirate, I'm certain he would do something similar and idolize some famous evil pirate like Kaido or Big Mom. 
With this attitude, Green Bull would go around causing a bunch of trouble for everyone, destroying towns and maybe even whole islands in the process. In the anime, we also know that Green Bull likes to prove his strength to those he admires, which is why despite Sakazuki telling him not to, he went to Wano in order to capture Luffy, thinking Sakazuki would be pleased if he succeeds. He would be no different as a pirate, and would probably be the cockiest out of everyone on this list. He would create a crew full of people like him who think they can take down the absolute strongest in the world. But this is precisely the reason I don't believe his adventure would go the way he wants. You see, with this attitude, Green Bull would carelessly charge into an emperor's territory like Whole Cake Island, Wano, or maybe even some of the Whitebeard's territory. Of course, he wouldn't have any solid plans set in place and would just go to prove himself by killing someone strong. And as you can probably guess, he would be completely obliterated. I can only see three possible outcomes for Green Bull after this loss. He would either be dead, captured in Big Mom's book, or imprisoned in Kaido's prison on Wano. I think it's best for this guy to just stick to being a marine. Now, although all the characters we covered so far had no intentions of actually becoming the pirates in the story, this next one actually did become a pirate. Needless to say, I'm talking about Aokiji, the new Titanic commander of the Blackbeard Pirates. So, did you ever wonder how different his pirate career would turn out if he was a pirate from the very beginning? Well, firstly, he would be a bit weaker than in the original story, as he would never meet Garp and train with him. Of course, he would still become incredibly strong by training alone, but we can all agree that nothing can really replace Garp's unorthodox training methods. Another important important thing is that Nico Robin wouldn't have survived the Ohada incident because there'd be no one to save her. I mean, I don't think I like this scenario so far. If Aokiji was a pirate, I believe he'd be laid back, not worrying about some race for an ancient treasure. He also wouldn't hurt innocent citizens or forcefully take any territories. He would just chill. Also, I think Aokiji would be the first character on the list who wouldn't have a single crewmate. For him, having a crew is just having people he has to worry about and protect, and that's not something he wants to do. Being alone also gives him the freedom to travel however and whenever he wants, so there's no one to scream at him for lazing around and sleeping all the time. On the rare instances that he does decide to wake up and travel, he would do it by freezing the water with his Hiya Hiya no Mi and riding his signature bicycle over it. No need for a fancy ship. Although Aokiji would be pretty strong, he could never become an emperor have a high bounty. That's because the world government would never view him as a serious threat since he doesn't cause any problems for them and he doesn't even have a crew to begin with. Due to his lack of any goal and crew, after a few years, I can totally see him joining someone else's pirate crew like he did in the original story. However, he wouldn't join just any crew. It has to be the one Aokiji agrees with, and of course they have to let him still be a free man without too many responsibilities. This could very well be Garp's crew, since they could probably get along as pirates the same way they did as marines. Also, Garp obviously wouldn't be that strict about discipline, which is great for Aokiji. From here on, he would sail the seas along with Garp and would help him train the youngsters on the ship. There's still three incredibly strong marines left to cover, and you won't believe how strong the last one would be as a pirate. Sengoku. Sengoku's a tough one to predict. His position as the fleet admiral forced him to listen to all orders from above, so we don't really know much about his personal views. One thing we know for sure is that he at least is not as rotten as some of the other people in the navy. Since Sengoku was keen on adopting and training kids in the past, like Rosinante and X-Drake, we can expect that as a pirate, he would do something similar, just on a much bigger level since he wouldn't have to do it in secret anymore. Sengoku would adopt and raise kids he sees potential in, and would turn them into top-tier fighters. While everyone else we've covered so far would either have a small crew or no crew at all, Sengoku would actually have a giant fleet. It would partly be made out of the kids he's trained, but a big chunk would also be random pirates who would join him out of respect. Okay, but what would he actually do with this giant fleet? Well, Sengoku doesn't have any world domination goals or anything like that in mind. He'd just want to get to the One Piece just like everyone else. But he wouldn't rush it. I mean, his whole thing is that he's the strategist, so he would probably have a big step-by-step -step plan on how to locate all the poneglyphs, how to steal them, and so on. Discipline would be the key in this crew, and Sengoku would often punish people who don't listen to him or slack off. However, his crewmates would still respect him because they know that everything he does is for their own safety. Sengoku would value his men a lot and would always try to minimize his crew's deaths and injuries. He would be careful about who he sends to combat and would avoid any unnecessary disputes with marines and other pirates. He would also be on good terms with most of the strongest pirates like Roger and Whitebeard, and although they wouldn't exactly be buddies, they wouldn't bother each other. Due to his mighty fleet and very good strategy, Sengoku and his crew would be one of the main players in the race for the One Piece, but would they actually manage to claim it before Roger? Well, no. You see, Roger has done a lot of stupid and not fully thought out things during his journey, like riding the knock-up stream to arrive on Skypiea or sneaking into Big Mom's territory to get a Poneglyph. Given how tactical Sengoku is, it doesn't really seem likely that he would take all these risks, and would probably just think of other 
safer ways to do these things. However, even though Roger would still become the Pirate King in this timeline, Sengoku would be remembered as one of the legends of the era, and who knows, he may even become the Emperor at some point. Before we explain how will Sakazuki, the strongest current Marine officer, fare as a pirate, let's first cover someone completely different. Someone who has absolutely no desire to achieve titles or find treasures. Fujitora. Although Fujitora may be the least scary out of the three admirals, he is by no means a weakling. We all know that Fujitora blinded himself because he couldn't stand looking at the evil anymore. Now, considering how much evil the world government does, it's not hard to imagine that in this fictional timeline, Fujitora would see something so bad that they did, which would eventually lead him to become a pirate to oppose the evil government. However, even after becoming a pirate, I believe he would still be one of the good guys that would try to use his influence as a pirate to make the world a better place. Actually, when you think about it, by not being a pawn to the marines, he could probably do much more good than he currently can in the story. His goals as a pirate would be to completely change the current power system in the world and free people from the world government's control. Due to their similar goals, Fujitora would often work with Dragon in the Revolutionary Army, being one of their biggest allies. When he's not helping them, however, he would sail around the Grand Line, freeing islands that are controlled by evil people and protecting them from pirates. He would offer those people to join his crew, giving them protection as long as they stick to him, similar to what Shanks is doing with all those weak crews sailing with him. He would donate most of the money he steals from other pirates to the islands that need it the most, and would overall be well-respected and a liked pirate. And finally, let's talk about a character you've all been waiting for, the current fleet admiral Akainu. As a pirate, Akainu would definitely be one of the worst pirates, maybe even the worst. He's already pretty violent as a marine, so just imagine how troublesome he would be if he didn't have to listen to any orders. Now combine his unstable character with super destructive Magu Magu no Mi and you get an absolute monster of a pirate. Akainu would command a gigantic pirate ship and have a very large crew under his command. Judging by his character, he wouldn't consider his crewmates friends and would see them more as pawns that he can use to achieve his goals. It's likely that he would even kill his own men if they ever did something to displease him. Also, any pirate alliances are completely out of the question as Akainu would rather die fighting than ally himself with another pirate. Same as all strong pirates, Akainu would have many territories under him that would, in return for his protection, be forced to give him large amounts of money every single month. Akainu would be one of the most feared pirate captains in the New World, annihilating small smaller pirate crews he comes across or sparing them if they chose to work under him. Of course he wouldn't only attack the weak pirates, but would also frequently fight other marine admirals and emperors, easily matching their strength. And when most of his men die, he would just recruit new people from territories under his control, replenishing his forces over and over again. Now, you probably noticed that Akainu as a pirate would share a lot of similarities with Kaido, but what if I tell you that he would actually be way more dangerous than him for one simple reason? You see, unlike Kaido, Akainu wouldn't just sit on one island and slowly grow his army and would instead be constantly fighting everyone around him, conquering even more territories and bringing terror everywhere he goes. Although Akainu and his pirate crew may seem unstoppable and strong enough to find the One Piece, this attitude would eventually lead to their downfall. You see, when you make the entire world your enemy and refuse to negotiate or back down, the world might just team up to take you down. I mean, just ask Rox. He knows it all too well. In this scenario, it's most likely that a big alliance between pirates would eventually form with the sole goal of defeating Akainu. Since he also enraged the marines with his senseless destruction, they would also help the pirate alliance behind the scenes, providing them with weapons or money. Despite all of his power, there wouldn't be anything Akainu could do, and after a long battle, he would finally be killed by the pirates. Since you obviously love these what if videos, you can click on this video next where we explain how strong will each straw hat be at the end of the series. And trust me, some of these power-ups are insane!